I, these have been really great questions, and mine's yeah. going to seem really trivial. Uh, in, no, no. You mentioned uh, Gene Roddenberry, and, yeah. and as luck would have it, a couple weeks ago, my wife and I were watching uh, DVDs of the old Star Trek, uh, yeah. and one of the special features was about all the great science fiction writers that, mm -hmm. that wrote for Star Trek, and, yeah. and the, the, they had like the administrative assistant, the one who worked in the office of the show, and said, the only one who wouldn't, they, they invited Ray Bradbury in, and he was very polite, and they showed him around, and he was saying, oh, this is really interesting, everything's good, but, and then they're saying, Harold Ellison writes for us, Theodore Sturgeon, and he's saying, oh, that's really nice, and he said, okay, thank you, bye. And I, 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 I thought, well, why didn't he write for it? And I, I thought, well, you know, maybe he didn't think of himself as a science fiction writer. You kind of, you know, you're, maybe took that away a little bit. I thought, well, maybe he didn't do TV back then, but you know, <laughs> he was doing a lot of TV, so I wonder if you have any insight into that. Why, why not? You know, attach himself to something like that. That's a great question, not trivial at all. You know, Star Trek was really important to television, as we all sit here and, you know, you know we've, we've criticized television, but Bradbury would say there's been great television. It, it can be an art form. And Star Trek, when it was working, was, was great. Um, you know, my hope with this book is that between my two books, every question that you throw, and it, that question is in here. Um, but I'll answer it for you right now, is that uh, Roddenberry came to Bradbury and said, you know, I'm going to all the greats, just like Rod Serling did the same thing and went to all the great um, weird fiction writers um, of the time and had them write for the Twilight Zone. Roddenberry went to all the great science fiction writers and said, will you write for Star Trek? And Bradbury, as he said, was uh, declined. And he declined simply, he said, I loved Star Trek. And I think those characters are what fueled that program more than even the ideas. But he said, they weren't my characters. And I felt really um, uncomfortable writing other people's characters. He's a book writer before he's a TV writer. And he is, was just unable to step in uh, at that point and write Roddenberry's characters and make them his own. He had done it uh, with Moby Dick. And I think that was a really grueling experience for him. He told me the only time he was truly suicidal when, it, when he was working for John Huston, trying to adapt this massive book. It drove him crazy. To ca encapsulate all of that into a two-hour film is nuts. And that's not an easy book on any level. And I think it drove him up a wall. At the end, it starred Gregory Peck, and it's a magnificent movie. And Bradbury did an amazing job. But it, it drove him mad, as mad as Ahab. And I think he'd had enough of dealing with other people's characters and just looked at it as easy enough to do his own thing. I also think it was a timing thing. Uh, Star Trek launched in the late 60s, and Bradbury was working on uh, other projects at that time. The Halloween Tree, uh, a book of short stories called I Sing the Body Electric, um, and some other projects. And I think the timing was off. But more than anything, if he were here, he would tell you emphatically, I just didn't want to write. Both Spock and Kirk and Bones, as great as they are, were not mine and I just didn't feel comfortable stepping into those shoes. But he was close enough to Roddenberry that at Roddenberry's funeral, Bradbury gave the eulogy um, and said, he began the eulogy by saying, it happened again today. Of course, the audience in the Beverly Hills funeral home said, what happened? He said, someone asked me, can I have your autograph, Mr. Roddenberry? And he said, you know, as long as I'm alive, Gene Roddenberry will live because people think I'm Gene Roddenberry. And then he went on to tell his, friend, tell his friendship with Roddenberry. He's a great admirer of Roddenberry, and Roddenberry was a great admirer of Bradbury, so much so that he named a ship in the Star Trek universe that you never really see, but it's referred to. If you're a, a Trekker or Trekkie or whatever the term is, you might be able to tell me. But uh, there is a ship in the mythology called the Bradbury. Uh, if you look it up on Trekopedia, uh, it's referenced. But Bradbury and, and Roddenberry were very close, but that's the answer.